SpongeBob is a funny guy. And as a funny guy, he's got lots of games, one of which I have already covered, but there is another often underlooked SpongeBob game that hides in the shadows of Battle for Bikini Bottom. And that game is Lights, Camera, the movie tie-in game. I mean, come on. When you get movie licensed games looking like you put the movie file through the laundry without the spin cycle, you gotta admire how amazing the SpongeBob ones are. And I shall be going through all three versions. Yes, once again, we have three completely different games under the same name. One a platformer, the other padding the resume for people at Way Forward. You know, the company that makes a Game Boy version of everything. Yeah, you there probably eating the leftover pizza for lunch. Way Forward have already turned that part of your life into a Game Boy game. And I played it, it sucked. Jimmy, you gotta get better toppings. <laughs> And of course, the PC version, with this time no alien jellyfish in sight, but rather... Wow, that killed my eyeballs! And also looking into this, I never actually knew they made a PS3 version that was so poorly received, they removed it from all storefronts, making it a rare commodity. But even if I had it, I don't think I could play it. The good fall is vertical like a dog wanting treats, and I'm all out of treats. Oh. So developed by Heavy Iron Studios literally a year after Battle for Bikini Bottom, so you know, there's a lot of similar assets, and in the same year they made The Incredibles PS2 game. Wow, what a resume, I wonder what they're doing now. Ooh. Good thing my eyeballs haven't recovered from before. Released in October 2004, and for some reason Europe had to wait a half a year for it. No problem, buddy. Getting ice is what friends are for. Except in France. Oh, that explains it. The games came out before the movie's release, meaning surely, surely they will cover the movie's plot accurately. But what do you think? And my personal attachment to this is that I had a friend who brought over the PS2 game, and then I borrowed said game from him to beat said levels. I think. I don't know, my memory is a little hazy since I think playing some of those levels ruined that part of my brain, with the only cure to make a YouTube video on it. Hey, maybe I should try doing that? Jeez, could the rumbling be any louder? Let's get it on! Excuse me? Go get what on? There's only so much I can infer from that statement, Patrick. Is this the Krusty Krab? Let's get it on! That's right, start making me money! Hopefully an ad played there. Come on, Mr. Krabs, I gotta keep you happy. He's a single father with a hungry daughter, you know. He's gotta feed her. Whale food is expensive. Alrighty, well, let's finally start it. Never heard it sound so fine. I'm, I'm sorry, can you speak up? Insert Squidward joke here. Why does a lemon say when it answers the phone? Yellow. Haha, <laughs> you see? Yellow. Let's get it on! Show tunes for everyone! Oh, uh, okay. Funny line, let me write this down. Whale song. Music to me. I'm sorry, can the characters just shut up for two minutes? They don't stop talking! This game has been no cheese. Did I ask for cheese? I mean, I could go for some cheese right now. Well, pretty much SpongeBob has this dream in the movie where he gets promoted to manager of the new Krusty Krab 2, which is just the Krusty Krab, but with the two. Also, it's frickin' next to the original store. I don't think that's how franchising works, Mr. Krabs. Talk to me, Krabs. It's oh no, this ain't like the I movie at the all. Well, oh, slightly. So they definitely got the same voice actors back, probably stated in their Nickelodeon lifetime contract that they are voicing SpongeBob forever. But they re-recorded the lines from the movie and changed up things. Like, I don't remember this stupid fish. It's horrible! I have a bomb! Wow, cool shirt, dude. Oh, this has never happened before! Get a hold of yourself, Eugene. I'm going in. What the hell? Can this game just relax for a bit? This has to be the quickest wait time for an idle animation to start. And, and look, he's doing it again! Collect manliness points to earn upgrades to your moves. Oh wow, they actually got Scarlett Johansson to voice this. Wonder if she considers this a greater role than Marvel. So okay, I guess like this two minute scene in the movie is now drawn out to this tutorial level. And since it's a dream, explosions everywhere. So pretty much this is a platformer like every other licensed game on the PS2, and it really controls nicely here. Square also is a spin attack that whacks enemies, and later on you unlock moves which I'll get to. Oh, what's this? A secret bonus? Alright, let me watch it! Stuff. Good thing my eyeballs are busted so I can't see me getting copyright strike for Viacom. And so we make it to the Krusty Krab to give this dude the damn cheese he wanted on his burger. 
Who are you? Hey, hang on. This ain't the same voice as the movie. Oh, yeah, and I'll risk the copyright for this. But the game will show screenshots from the movie with a narrator voicing new lines summarizing what happens. But, like, they didn't turn off the interpolation, so there's ghosting on the frames. Like, come on, it's really an easy fix. Me, when I do a joke, only editors will get. <laughs> So, well, Spongebob wakes up from his dream and realizes he didn't get the promotion as his co-worker Squidward got it instead. Because Spongebob is kinda childish to Mr. Krabs. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> so he goes home all sad. Are you sure this is a kid's game? And Spongebob goes to a bar to get smashed with his best friend Patrick. No, that's literally what happens, except it's ice cream instead of alcohol. Hey buddy, come on, wake up. Um, did he use his headset mic to record this dialogue? So a drunk Spongebob causes a mess and we control Patrick chasing after him. Ah, uh, that, that really was the idle face you wanted for him. Well, Patrick controls a lot more heavier than Spongebob, literally turning like a truck because he's so big and thick. His special moves are also different, which I'll get to later. Now keep in mind, this isn't a dream. So Patrick is literally killing the hard workers of this establishment. Well, I mean, they do keep trying to burp on him. So the level involves swallowing Spongebob's path, opening new areas to bounce through and so on. Most of these levels are fairly linear with platforming like jumping to ledges and defeating the enemies in front of you. At some points there are areas where you have to get to with your abilities, but for the most part you will never be lost on where to go. For the most part. And helping you throughout your journey is... Any more Goofy Goober tokens. Yeah, her. Huh. She will ask for Goofy Goober tokens, he's like the mascot of this kid's place. A big freaking. Nuts. And the tokens, well, you get one for finishing a level and one for all the bonus activities which involve those special moves. So let's learn one now. Time to spin. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Bruh. So Patrick gets a rolling move which makes him move really fast and yeah, I don't think it's used in actual puzzles, it's just a way to speed him up. Well, alright, we finished the level and Spongebob realizes he's drunk and that he's late for work. Now isn't that relatable to all the kids playing? See, this is why Spongebob is an adult show. I mean, don't take my word for <laughs> it. We also see Spongebob censor himself. Oh my gosh! But then, you know, straight up say, I am late for work! Mr. Krabs is gonna kill me! So Spongebob goes back to find that Mr. Krabs is about to die at the hands of King Neptune, who had his crown stolen and the note says that Krabs took it. This is all set up by Plankton as a way to finally complete his goal to steal the Krabby Patty recipe from him. But Spongebob is like, no, I will show them I'm no kid. I will be a manly man. I'll go to Shell City where the crown is and bring it back to you. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna like swim all the way there or? Hang on, doesn't bread get wet in water? Yes. So this is pleasant. I mean, there's no timer and you got to get to the end without losing all your health. Oh uh, yeah, by the way, the health is Krabby Patties and you pick them up in the overworld. Also, there's freaking nitrous. <laughs> the turning and controls are incredibly heavy. It's almost like driving a sandwich is not a good idea. Also, can the city not fall apart for like two seconds? Anyway, while this is happening, Plankton starts selling the Krabby Patty since crabs got like frozen by Neptune. And free with every purchase is a mind controlling bucket helmet. Squidward, on the other hand, with his ginormous brain, sees through this plan, but everyone is now mind controlled. Will Squidward save the day? No. So these become like the new villains for us. Regular fish people who are brainwashed, so we have to kill them. They come in different types and can be defeated with different moves. Like there's these floating ones that hover and spit stuff at you while you are platforming. So it's so frustrating. Please, I'm just trying to platform. It's a platforming game. Kids game, am I right? Spongebob then gets an uppercut, but you gotta stand right underneath them, so you can get tedious trying to get two shots on them. And so we enter the American countryside. What, you don't believe me? <laughs> How patriotic. The main goal of this level and the next few is to find and destroy Plankton's mind control towers and televisions. And so we blow up the tower, killing the fish. <laughs> Next up is a bathtub slide, and I really like these levels. They are very different to the driving ones, as you can't just turn them around. You only move forward and have to jump over obstacles. Also, they reference a very popular movie. The cool thing is that the double jump actually can help us turn the tight corners. 
And well, we make it through, but the car gets stolen, meaning we have to grab the key of this dude at a bar. Now, while this was a hilarious scene in the movie, here is just another platformer stage. I mean, were you expecting anything else in this platforming game? My flop is the mightiest flop of all! It's called the Smash. This is the only time Scarlet got to swear. Does Avengers Disney sure weren't letter? So the Smash is just a belly flop Patrick gets to destroy enemies like this dude who has a dog. I mean, I mean, worm on a leash. But you can't hurt any other ways. So, uh, I mean, uh, that didn't help me. And I also forgot to mention, but in case you may be wondering, uh, things like, yo, why is he breaking all them boxes? And well, it's actually because of the power up system. You get weights, aka manliness points. And when it's maxed out, you can upgrade either your health or the abilities. And speaking of other collectibles, I mentioned how there are bonus levels throughout the the map and this takes you to the special zones where you can have ball spongebob rolling or patrick jumping on floating boxes in the boy or just straight up an enemy wave arena fight and seriously screw this one holy moly but by doing these you get more gooby goofer tokens which you'll need to progress and you will have to push through some of them because they can be extremely tough and off putting well then the lads get the key and drive off in another driving segment Oh no. Well, thankfully it's different as it's a big windy area when you got to find these keys to open the door to move on. And while all this is happening, Plankton hired a killer called Dennis to hunt us down to so remember him for later. Now then, SpongeBob and Patrick get distracted by this sweet old lady selling ice cream. I'll have two chocolate banana splits with sprinkled fairy stars and fairy stars and extra sauce, please. Someday I'll get a game that won't stuff up when I emulate. Aww. And it's at this point I realized, yeah, they didn't get the movie voices for the NPCs. Come on, kiddies, have some ice cream. Also, this was a giant fish thing using the granny tongue as bait. So this means a boss fight. And it's pretty easy, just does the charge attack, then attack when he's near the ledge. Now SpongeBob and Patrick get scared because they got across this trench to Shell City. But Mindy is like, ta-da, you got mustaches now. So with the seaweed mustache power, they venture in, which involves another slide level, probably my favorite one. Something about the environment really makes this fun to go through. Holy cow, you actually did it? Now this is where the game started to feel a bit tedious to me, as Mindy blocks you from progressing and not teaching you new moves unless you have these tokens. So that means you gotta go to the level select and do the bonus stuff. Thankfully, it just plops you right down where you need to be so you aren't redoing the whole level to find these tokens. It kind of soured my mood because I'm just like, like, come on, let me continue. I don't want to be forced into a time trial or a ring challenge to continue the story. Do you want to try a time challenge? Why did you say it in that voice? I'm challenged all the time. Uh, well, this is the trench level, which has enemies based on SpongeBob's new ability, bowling. I don't know, in the first three seasons, he never did a bowling episode, I think. So you bowl to hit switches or these horrible, annoying new enemies that fire these rockets at you. Pretty much one of the worst enemies in the game since you can't hit them normally. And boy, howdy, it gets worse from here on out. I mean, this level also introduced a wall bounce mechanic for SpongeBob, and I mean, come on, half the time he has a mind of his own and would climb higher than needed. is fine. And the worst part was this section where you have to fight waves of enemies, some that attack close, some only with Suburban Dad's favorite pastimes, and it was more pain than I signed up for. Maybe there's cheats? Oh wow, well, I was trying to make a joke, but of course a 2000s game had cheats. Well, yep, okay, you can get some outfits with the cheats, as normally the bonus outfits are unlocked through you getting the extras you find in the levels, like this Mermaid Man costume. Other times you might get concept art featuring Gimsuit Patrick. So I got three health points now, all the moves unlocked and upgraded, including this new move controlling a guitar missile. And I mean, holy heck, my attacks are so strong now. But even with all that, I still barely survived this section. Anyway, we make it to another area where we gotta destroy Plankton's brainwashing TVs. I mean, how did he even get all these out from all the way here? Like, seriously, how? How did he do it? But Patrick learns a new move where he can pick up objects to throw. And it's sort of weird, like if you press the button again, he gently lobs it to the nearest object. But if you hold a direction, he eats it with the force of an Olympic athlete. 
And also, you know how I said the game is mostly explanatory on where to go? Yeah, not this level. So firstly, there's these new annoying enemies that have a laser attack that gets you if you're too close. And I mean the only, and I mean only way is to throw stuff onto them. That or use the reflecting on the spin move since it's fully upgraded. But also here, I managed to lower this platform, but not all the way. So I looked it up and you meant to stack the fruit here to barely make it to jump onto the ledge. I mean, okay, was this mechanic that I just missed learning? I mean, it looks really janky. And then pretty much after that, I was stuck here till apparently you have to jump onto the changing room, which you've never done before. Oh yeah, and also these are used to swap between the two if you want to do those bonus stages. Well, we finished the level, but oh, remember Dennis? He's finally arrived to kill us. Your worst. Ah, well, in the movie, this was Alec Baldwin, and I mean, they managed to get Mindy and King Neptune's celebrity voices back, but not him? Oh, okay, well, he's voiced by Fred. Huh, I wonder if he's voiced anything before. What the hell? Okay, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, hey, sure, he does a really good job sounding like him. And now we have a boss fight, but it's so easy. Literally chuck the fruit or spin the toilets that he golf swings at us. What the hell did I just read out? So in the cutscene, he's about to win, but a scuba diver squishes him. But instead of saving us, grabs the two. And from what I know of the movie, next up is Shell. Oh, wait, this wasn't in the movie. Yeah, to weirdly pad out the game, we get another driving segment as a dream sequence where we have to chase the mascot. Sure, fine, okay. And the two wake up to see they have reached Cell City, but it's actually just a gift shop. So we get a slide puzzle where the two just slide on the ground. I'm sure Neptune will appreciate all the scratches. This involves going round and round and round and round and round and round, and round, and round in a circle on these wires knocking over things so you can escape. And it kind of glitched for me as I I did all the checkpoints, but the game just didn't show anything till I fell off, then it suddenly showed the room changing. Anyway, the two escape with a crown, but don't know how to get back home. I mean, did you see the stuff we passed? I don't want to do that ever again. But hey, look, it's... I can take you there. What? I'm not a lifeguard, but I play one on TV. Okay, so if you don't know, in the movie they got David Hasselhoff, a celebrity known for his role as a lifeguard in Baywatch as an in-joke. But I guess the game couldn't get the rights to his likeness, so it's just literally a man. But they even painted over the screenshots to avoid copyright. I sure hope we don't have to avoid copyright with him again in the other versions. Bikini bottom. But Dennis returns somehow. And we have another crazy fight. But there's no music. You know, Dennis as a killer, he's kind of easy to beat, especially with the charged up bowling attack I got, which explodes on contact. And so we finally get rid of him and make it back to Planktopolis, where Plankton has now converted the whole area into his own evil paradise. I'm sorry, SpongeBob. You don't have enough Goofy Goober tokens for me to give you the Sonic Wave. Hang on, wait, I have the move already with my cheat code. Well, screw you, Mindy, I'ma continue. So this level makes use of all the moves you've learned and wait a sec, I remember this stage. Yeah, okay, so for some weird reason, I was like, huh, I'm sure I borrowed this game from a friend and I played it. When I was going through the levels for this video, I didn't remember anything except this one. I think my friend was stuck on this level and brought it over to finish it for him and... I sure as heck didn't finish it back then. There is an incredible amount of precise platforming and just so much jank. I mean, seriously, what is that hitbox? So yeah, I saved scummed, okay? Come on, I'm near the end, all right? And after this, we actually aren't at the Krusty Krab. We have another driving segment. Why another roadblock? Wait, with my cheats, I might have accidentally unlocked all the levels. So I can just load the final one. Well. Bye, Mindy. I think I'll just walk to the Krusty Krab. <laughs> and so Plankton is now controlling King Neptune, and we must defeat him by destroying the helmet to give the crown back and free Mr. Krabs. And oh my goodness, this level was insane. So King Neptune has a flamethrower because he's trying to kill you. Just let that sink in. And I thought, okay, you can spin these tables to reflect it. No, turns out what you gotta do is spin all the tables around and then dodge his fire attacks three times in a row without getting hit. Then he brings up a sniper scope and you have to hide behind Mr. Krabs so the reflection hits the helmet. And that's not the end because you got the second wave, now dodging an electric shock in time, and then the final phase, which is the same, but with less platforms and these two flying enemies spitting gunk at you. If you managed to do this legit as a kid, I must applaud you because holy Poseidon, Neptune really has it out for all spots. 
SpongeBob. And so we destroy his helmet and Plankton's plans are ruined. Kill him, you idiot! Idiot? Uh, no, no, uh, idiot. <laughs> uh, French for a uh, handsome man. <laughs> wait, 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 what was that? Mr. Lawrence's voice actor has screamed so much in the show, could, could he not do it for the recording? Do they not have the rights to use the ones he's done for the show many times? Like, look, it's so easy. <laughs> and with some stock images, like, what the heck? Did they just erase his arm? Arr, SpongeBob, me boy, I lost me arm in the war. Arr, ga, 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 ga. We get the happy ending. Neptune unfreezes crabs and SpongeBob admits he likes being a kid. We must stop and wonder how long until the sequel depends on the box office. Well, that was obvious. <laughs> and I mean, this must have been a really cool game to play as a kid, even if you never saw the movie. But I mean, did you really want this weirdly explained story of what happened in the movie? But man, the music tracks are really good. All original songs, really catchy. However, yes, and some things were kind of annoying, like locking the story to the tokens, the crazy difficulty spikes, or insane challenging platforming in the final levels. It kind of dampened the whole experience at the end. But I'm really glad I finally got to beat this game. I know there are so many SpongeBob games out there, and this is easily one of the better ones. But what's this? We still got other versions to cover. Because you cannot have a video game in the 2000s with consistent gameplay on all the consoles. I mean, I would be surprised to see if WayForward made this run on the Game Boy. Wow, crunchy. So the Game Boy version released by the company that haunts all these videos, which has a crunchy version of the main theme song, and then SpongeBob's mischievous grin staring back at you. What war crimes has he just committed? We'll find out at the hearing. So you start the game and it's on a grid board where you got levels to pick, and the first one has crunchy stills and even crunchier sprites, where you read through an abridged version of the movie's plot. Then level names in the show's title card font before controlling SpongeBob and Patrick in a side-scrolling platformer. Do you think way forward have like a template to copy paste all these licensed games so you can jump and glide with Patrick's indecent exposure while jumping on enemies to defeat them? Also a core mechanic. Okay, that's adorable. But what's not adorable is SpongeBob sudding all over the place. And the main move is to charge this up where you can charge it for a while. Before letting go, using Patrick as a battering ram, not caring about how much ribs he will break. I think that was three. So yeah, it just goes to the levels that aren't from the movie at all, even this bonus mini stages too, where you can randomly roll for lives. Yes, very Mario-esque, even with the superstar invincibility. But in between you got some movie story, so at least it was trying to follow the plot, very crunchily I might add. And it had a password system like the Barbie game. And some other levels include this incredibly trippy view, driving forward, avoiding obstacles, and would you believe it, this game has actual boss fights where you dodge attacks and jump on the enemy's head three times to win. It's not the most impressive SpongeBob way forward Game Boy game, yes they have standards, but I guess it's a nice way to recap the movie in a crunchy formula. Well what about the PC with a 2004 high def definition goodness. If the PS3 version that released after this looked like this, what would we see from the PC? It's an ice cube. Mm, it's kind of shaped like me. Oh. Oh no. Well, the first warning signs were from the install where it speed ran through everything in the game. And oh my god, this game has a writer. With the boastful catalogue of the Agatha Christie. Surely they will follow the plot of the movie, right? An ancient set of caves that protect the focusing uh. orb. Oh no. Okay, I'm joking. The game's presentation is very unique. These 2D backgrounds where you got this chunky boy waddling around. I actually love this aesthetic so much. You don't see many games try this and actually succeed. I mean, remember Barbie's vacant stare, right? Although I'm not liking the uh, text. Yeah, okay, emulating games on my PC is cursed. All right, who's the studio? Oh no, not them from before. So yeah, it's weird that a PC game doesn't have the movie cutscenes. I mean, I'm sure it's enough file size. I saw what you were installing there. But it's just got these stills with the narrator and going into the game. Gary, you're so witty. Will the quips never end? Absolutely delightful! Yeah, so it's a point and click adventure game where you click on not too many things to make things do things, but other things. You can press F1 to see the things to press, but these things then usually make SpongeBob talk. Looks like a beautiful day outside! The perfect weather for a promotion! Or talking to characters where you got multiple options to talk to them about the things. <laughs> And so after watching CBS, I found out that you can make SpongeBob shower. 
the game then broke. And so this game turns out you gotta get ready for work by finding your clothes which are inside this trunk, but you don't have the key. So you go into the kitchen, all slow like. By clicking where SpongeBob should walk and grabbing the spatula from the kitchen, which gets added to your inventory, then head back to your room, using it to bust through the lock to grab your pants, and then be decent enough to walk outside for this incredibly rare view of SpongeBob's backyard. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in the three seasons before the movie, we never saw it in this much detail. The only time was when SpongeBob was blowing bubbles at Patrick. Huh? Huh? Uh, inflation. And so you gotta get rid of the phone guy by jump scaring him with the fog horde, causing him to have a heart attack. Then to fix the phone yourself, which somehow works, before using said phone, but the TV is on and too loud, so you gotta find your remote to turn it off, by walking to Patrick's house and finding that he's got your remote, but he wants to trade it for ice. Well, what if I got you some ice for your Kelpsy? Then you'd only have to get up once. You'd do that for me? No problem, buddy. Getting ice is what friends are for. You know ice is illegal, Spongebob. And then you get the remote, turn off the TV to call Squidward for toothpaste since you're out of it. But he changes his number due to how much you call him, so you break into his house and stand there watching him shower. And the goal is to use his toothpaste by turning off his radio, memorize his new number, go home, call him, leave the phone on, run back in while he's distracted and use his toothpaste. That's chapter one. Yeah, I couldn't believe the stuff you had to do in the game, though thankfully I found if you mash the mouse click, Spongebob runs at least. Oh yeah, and don't try to do things the game doesn't want you to, because I thought, okay, I got his toothpaste, I'll use it in my own bathroom, you know, be a bit decent. Oh, the game crashed, and I had to use it in Squidward's house. Well, that's a good lesson for kids playing, right? So you learn about Plankton's Plan Z and actually get to play as Plankton. That's really cool. I am small. And they got his robot sponge chef? Wow, okay, the devs were fans of the show. And you gotta do things to distract the robot to grab the file, then the jetpack, and head to King Neptune's with its own minigame. Ah, Neptune's castle. Why don't I have a castle, you may very well ask. Sadly, that question lacks a satisfactory answer. And to get into the crown room, you gotta combine string and horseshoes together, ignoring the jester. It's an image of a book. I guess that's so people who can't read have no trouble finding the library. So you enter and grab the crown before it shows what happens to crabs, and now you gotta get the paddy wagon as Spongebob by actually finding the pass key card into the garage, which involves another fetch quest where you gotta trade for it by making fried ice cream for this kid inside the Krusty Krab too. Well gee, that sure looks safe. Please, don't go scaring me again. I'm in quite a state. And yeah, you got these random fish NPCs, even Perch Perkins from the movie, but they didn't get D. Bradley Baker, I think, for the voices, and it honestly feels like they were just using people from the dev team with not so professional mics. Have a good day! Hey, with you gone, how could I possibly have a bad day? That's the spirit! So you get robbed of the car and have to get it back in the biker's den, which plays different to the movie. You find the Goofy Goober theme song lyrics here, and then give it to the conjoined twins who then sing it while you rant about Zen. Oh, so that's what his war crime was about. Do you know what I hate? Sandy feet. Cause then you get sand in the bed, and you can never get it all out, and there's always this one last grain. And no matter- And I can't get over these low budget voices. Hello again. I'm back. Still alive, huh? Surprising. Yeah, yeah. Well then, why don't you empty your pockets? You're still wearing the same pants. Well, then you head to Shell City as you play as Mindy. Yep. Who then has to break out of a room to help SpongeBob. And this was probably the worst level for me since all the characters have such low level voice acting and you don't really know who I these people the are. Please. Sorry, Princess. I can't let you by. The king wouldn't approve. And so in the trench, instead of fighting monsters, you wander through the fog. The stench! Smells like. Eat. Yeah, it does. It's horrible. Oh, I kind of liked it. I thought you don't have a nose. And this chapter, man, did it have a spooky vibe. As you have to find this orb to get through the fog, which involves you going to this very isolated hotel and solving a crime where this lady has a pearl stolen. And you find out there's clams under the floorboards, which then lets you enter a cave. And we get actual lore that apparently Patrick is scared of caves. Bob, yes, Patrick? I think I'm going to stay out here. Why? I, uh... I'm... I'm afraid of caves! But you live under a rock! And? Well, I mean, a cave, a rock... Are you saying my house is like a cave? Oh, no! 
not really. Uh, slightly cave-ish, maybe. I'm gonna pretend like I didn't hear that. Okay, okay, have it your way. Wait here, I won't be long. And after doing some memorization puzzles, we One. find this old fish. I'm 52. We then get the orb in this room that looks so ill-fitting to the lore of Spongebob. Like, okay, sure. Maybe they had to make this because a point-and-click game wouldn't work with singing monsters. But are you happy with the consequences? And the next level has Spongebob and Patrick visiting the chiropractor. I am as shocked as you are. Where they have to help other invertebrates who all speak with French accents. Okay, I'm gonna go. Viva la revolution. To be treated by the doctor but they don't actually want to be treated, they just want the right to be treated. Huh. Which involves walking through mazes, shrinking turtleneck sweaters and boiling water, seducing a receptionist by telling her how many bones you have, and then finally getting to meet the head French guy, and I don't know what all the point of this was for. So you get captured by the diver and get dried up back to the movie's plot, where you get a little section as Patrick to save Spongebob by finding an onion that makes him cry tears that destroy the lamp and set off the sprinklers, as the two grab the crown, but need a way back home. Okay Patrick, let's find that whistle and ride that- Oh god, they still couldn't get the rights to him. No, don't draw him again. How much royalties do you want for this game? And in the final level, you have to break the chum bucket helmets by talking to this random NPC who says to get equipment from the chum bucket. And you dodge the robot clone to then play guitar to break the helmets as the credits roll. Where we see Plankton getting institutionalized. Plankton is removed from circulation and placed in a suitable institution. Patrick is finally interviewed by Felch Perkins. Wow. Just... Wow. I know the bar for Spongebob PC games was so low for me from the last time with alien jellyfish and fighting Patrick, but this was actually enjoyable. I mean, the running back and forth was annoying, but I love the aesthetic of the place, how the 3D blends with the environments, how you got so much dialogue with character voices, not a lot of good with the other ones. I might trade it for some fried ice cream. Fried ice cream? Ugh. But it feels like a lot of care was put into making this game based off the movie, and it feels like it was actually almost based off the movie. At least no annoying driving segments. And they actually had a lot of lines directly from the movie, but redone with the same voice I mean, we're not gonna get the crown, save the town, Mr. Crown. So yeah, wow, well, Spongebob, the movie, the game, the novel, the movie, the game, across all platforms, on average, is really good. They try to stick to the source material, giving you a very unique gameplay you don't see in most other Spongebob games, while also having a fun, unique time throughout the journey. And with how popular the movie was, I'm sure at least one of these versions you experienced in your childhood. And hopefully, it was the one you'd like to remember. While I don't think it holds as much love for me as opposed to Creature, I still very much enjoyed my time with this and am blown away by how Spongebob exists on the PC. And for a final fun fact, there is actually cheat codes in the PC version where you enter Plankton after pressing F 12 to find special outfits you can wear in the levels. Hello again, Patrick. Hi there, SpongeBob. Oh, cool. Now oh, I can use that in the thumbnail. 